Redundancy is something that we as climbers often espouse a mostly complete understanding of. The idea for us is fairly simple. There is a backup in case something in our system were to fail. This fits closely with the literal definition of redundancy, at least in engineering terms, which is the inclusion of extra components which are not strictly necessary for functioning in case of the failure of other components in the system. This idea seems like it should be a fairly linear train of thought. Everywhere in my system should exist some form of backup in case something in the system were to fail. This may work well in urban environments, but the mountains are far less forgiving, and the answer may not be so black and white. And it may become a little more muddied than we realize. So let's take a look at this concept of redundancy and dissect its intricacies. Top of the first pitch of C'est La Vie. Nice work to Casey for putting this one up. Couldn't believe all of that rock fall that we just heard over there, or Serac fall or whatever it was. redundancy, it's our anchors that come to mind. And the concept of redundancy typically plays itself out like this. From top to bottom here, we have two bolts, we have two carabiners, we have two legs of our attachment, the sling here, isolated by this big knot, which then gives us two strands of material and our master point. Done, right? Redundancy throughout the system. This is where most climbers start to begin assessing their need for a tether and putting their partners on belay. So here, I can just tether myself with the rope to my master point. Makes sense from the start, but wait a second. This is just one attachment. That's not redundant. So what was the point of making all of these steps in order to just simply arrive at a place that's not redundant. Many climbers will attempt to answer this conundrum by tethering themselves to both bolts, usually using a variety of methods between the rope or some type of separate lanyard or both. Oftentimes it looks like this. Clove pitch to one carabiner and now either creating another clove hitch on this bolt with another carabiner or quick draw, or oftentimes what I see folks using are separate things like a Metolius PAS or a Petzl Quick Adjust. Here I have a similar anchor chain where each chain is individually rated. And it's nice because I can adjust it. And so I just clip that up here. All right, excellent. Now we've solved the mystery here and now everything in the system is redundant. Now it's time to put my partner on belay. So I pull up some rope, go to put my partner on belay. Wait a second. Now, ignoring the fact that there's only a single rope here, this is a single device with a single carabiner. Well, so what gives? This is typically where most climbers will relent and simply bring their partner up at this point on this seemingly non-redundant system. So in all of our efforts to add redundancy throughout our system for our anchor, ourselves, and our partner, thinking about them in those ways, we've added a great deal of busyness and clutter to our anchor. This can be frustrating for ourselves, but especially frustrating for parties that are repelling the route or ascending the route and passing us and needing to utilize this same anchor. This leaves them with few options. This also adds a great degree of things that are getting in the way of the business of making sure my partner is secure. And remember, no matter what we've done here, eventually we end up here with this seemingly non-redundant part of our system. So what's the point? Why did we decide to stop here and deem our entire anchor sufficiently redundant? It seems that this is a question that climbers sometimes have trouble with and attempt to answer by making many superfluous gestures, often cluttering their anchors in the process. 
at times in a way that not only affects themselves, but others sharing the route as well. So let's look a bit more closely. There may be redundancy here where we did not expect there to be. I want to propose here that we have overlooked an element of redundancy that doesn't merely rely on material count to give us the principle. For starters, let's discuss this right here. Let's ask ourselves quickly if this carabiner is redundant. It's only a single attachment, so it would not seem to meet our criteria for redundancy. However, if we broaden our definition of redundancy, we'll notice this added step here. Now, to make this carabiner fail, I would actually have to unlock the gate, open the gate, and remove myself from the carabiner. Ah, so now we can begin to look at this concept a little more deeply with some fresh eyes. Now we can see that as we arrive to our tethering option, so long as there's no terrain in the way or any other obstructions, we know that tethering ourselves to this single component will give us plenty of security due to these added measures. My rope, likewise, good enough for a potential leader fall on the ascent, is certainly more than adequate for tethering myself to the anchor under just body weight at a stance. we may be overlooking in redundancy is our proximity to our system. This is to say whether or not we can effectively put our hands or our eyes on the system. Whether or not we can immediately interact with our system will affect what methods of security we choose to utilize. Here I'm belaying with just this single locking carabiner, <clears throat> but there's a reason why. Right now, I am fully engaged and cognizant of this entire system with easy proximity of reaching in and correcting anything that may be happening here, such as gate flutter opening the carabiner or the carabiner rubbing against terrain somewhere. I am able to immediately affect change to the system. In contrast, when we set up our anchor and return to the ground to top rope and belay from below, we may at best only have eyes on our system a couple of times during the activity. This is why we add the extra element of security to our top roping anchor in instructional contexts. Our proximity to the anchor has been lengthened, and our role in the security equation has been drastically reduced, and so therefore we stack the odds back in our favor with gestures such as adding a second locking carabiner, opposite and opposed to the other carabiner in our master point. Many times we will find that we are confident enough in our system to only add a second opposite and opposed carabiner that is non-locking. So now we can see that it is our gestures as well as our proximity, not simply just the amount of material that's in our system that lend us redundancy. The multiple gestures as an example of opening a locking carabiner, our proximity to our anchor, along with a host of other gestures, can also lend us redundancy and help us guard against system failure. So the next time you're out in the world constructing anchors, ask yourself where in your system are you lending yourself redundancy or subtracting from it. See if you can make the argument to yourself and your partner if it's okay to add or subtract an element of your system. Just remember, however, that when possible, this should be under the guise of a certified mountain professional. And anytime you're practicing a new system, it should always be done on the ground before you actually take this into the air. So thank you again, everyone. Really appreciate you tuning in, and I hope that you've learned something about redundancy, and I hope that it's left you with more answers than it has questions. However, if there are any questions remaining, please absolutely feel free to leave them in the comments below. I encourage comments, thoughtful, creative, and as always, respectful discussion. Also linked below in the description, I have a link to an account that you can choose to donate to if you so wish. Obviously, please do not feel obligated to do so, 
However, your donation helps to make this channel grow and get better. It helps provide new equipment for the channel that I hope to get as soon as our quarantine is over, of course. And to all of my donors who decide to donate, I will make sure to prioritize your comments and questions in future videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much to the donors that help make this possible. In the meantime, subscribe to this channel. Also give this video a big like. And then of course, please check out my Instagram for more content and Tech Tip Tuesday every Tuesday. I hope to see y'all in the next video and I hope that you give me more ideas of things to do in the future and I look forward to seeing you again. And remember, for every complicated problem, there's often a safe, efficient, and simple answer.